Hal Amai, or in English, Hold Me Tight. We're introduced to four troubled teenagers in a typical Danish public school. They're in 8th or ninth grade, and none of them have a quite picture-perfect life. Hassan is the son of a very strict immigrant father. Sarah's parents work a lot, so she's really the only one who takes care of her little brother. Mikkel has sort of crush on Sarah, and while it does make him kind of uncomfortable, he still feels he has to live up to the other boy's expectations. And finally, Louise's mother parties often. She doesn't seem to have any contact with her father, and she was Hassan's girlfriend for a while. We follow these four over the course of 24 hours that change their lives forever. The acting is incredible. There are almost no sour notes in any of the performances. The girl who plays Louise does have a couple of instances where she isn't entirely convincing, but I think it's also that her character is written as excessively cruel. The girl who plays Sarah, who's really the our sympathy the most, even though all four are victims in, in some way, has very expressive eyes. She looks not unlike Kristen Stewart, but she has more than two expressions. In general, very talented girl. This does a nice job of making all the characters human and have more than one dimension to them. However, at the end of the day, you really don't feel like you know them. It seems like it goes too far in the direction of making them neutral. So it kind of goes back and forth between them being very neutral and almost essentially being victims, and then these times where they do very out of character things. I already mentioned that the character of Louise is at times very cruel. This leads to a kind of conflict because she's set up to be a victim about as much as the other three, and indeed is one. The problem is that the filmmakers here have a very clear idea of what they want the conflict to be, and they end up kind of forcing the characters to behave out of character when that is required to set up the conflict. The conflict itself in theory, is credible. The execution is a little unconvincing at parts. There are some aspects of it that aren't quite all that good, and then there are some aspects of it that are absolutely great. I'm gonna get into that in the spoilers section. Scenes between the four leads and their parents are almost always spot on. Very convincing. Between the students, it feels a little bit like we're watching someone's idea of how these people relate to each other. It just isn't quite natural. The cinematography and editing are astonishing. A lot of tight shots, but not so many that it leads to claustrophobia. With few exceptions, the editing is spot on. This is meant to be fairly intense. I didn't personally find it to be but it also tries a little bit too hard. For example, there is this tendency to cut from something that's fairly calm and quiet to something that's a little bit more intense, a little louder. And one of these cuts were just trying way too hard. Particularly because the thing they cut to that was loud and intense had absolutely nothing to do with the conflict. About it supposedly being intense, I think it would have been if we really knew these characters more. I hate to say it, but at the worst moments of this, of which there are not terribly many, and which certainly do not ruin the best moments, these characters do kind of feel like pawns, puppets, to communicate the main thematic. In fact, the theme is literally put right into the mouth of Sarah. Twice. I guess maybe they were really going for making these very neutral and relatable. I personally think it's a better idea to make them very interesting, even if you might not be able to see yourself completely 
in that character, you'll still get a better experience out of an interesting, fully developed character, in my opinion. The sound side is impeccable. There's very little music in this, and what there is fits beautifully. Very underplayed, not manipulative, and it uses sound well and silence perfectly. There's this kind of numbing effect to silence or to sound that's like partially cut off, and it's used incredibly well here. One might think that this director, it being his first time helming a feature-length film, he's only done shorts up until this one, and I understand they're quite revered, would go absolutely nuts with all these new toys at his disposal. But he really thinks it through, he uses what is appropriate. The scene of the incident that the whole film revolves around is just unforgettable. Honestly, when I found out that this was written by the same man who gave us Kollegil or Room 205, a really lousy Danish horror film with one-dimensional characters, a really messy plot, it's like the illegitimate child of a drama about young people and bullying and such and The Ring. Yeah doesn't sound like those two would go together well, does it? So if anybody else had that fear, or has it now, I want to make it absolutely clear he's gotten much better. Finally, I just want to finally, I just want to say for international audiences who may not be familiar with Danish films, our censorship is more lenient than, say, the American. So, just so you know, there are teenagers of both sexes in their underwear in this movie. If the theme of bullying and peer pressure at all appeals to you, I would say go watch this movie. Subtitled, if you have to. Dubbed, if you can't have it any other way. It's the third recent Danish movie that I've reviewed that goes into those themes, and it's by far the one that has the most credibility in its treatment of them. That was my spoiler-free review of Hold me tight or hold on my. Hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time.